Welcome everyone to our latest We Will Travel Again events. Some of you have been to several of these before. We've been doing them since July. Um, so if you are interested in seeing any of our past destinations, there are so many of them, um, you can go up to that link you see before you on the screen, bit.ly slash We Will Travel Again events. And you'll see what's coming up. Um, we've got France coming up, US cities, Mexico. And then you can also see a link at the bottom of that page that will get you to um, our past recordings, which is great. So feel free to log on to my website. Again, my name is Christy Mahan. I own Dream Vacations, Escape Artist Holidays. And I hope you are interested in vacationing in Alaska. That's what we're gonna be talking about tonight. I've got my friend and colleague from Royal Caribbean to join us. Her name is Marissa Crescenzi. Hello, Marissa. Hello, Christy. Thank you so much for having me this evening. Um, there's so much, so much to cover tonight. Um, and primarily what we're going to be talking about is what you can see and do and experience on a journey up to Alaska if you were to take a cruise. Now, cruising is a very popular way to see Alaska. It runs seasonally between May and September, with the best times being more in the middle of the summer. Um, but they're great um, vacations that really give you a, lo a, um, a lot of parts of Alaska in a week. Um, so you get to see much more of things because it is a cruise as opposed to just going one place. Um, plus the coastline is so spectacular, right? So magnificent, so many wonderful animals to see, right? Whales breaching, the glaciers, um, so much majesty can be seen from the coast. We're also going to talk a little bit about um, the land portion of what is called a cruise tour. A cruise tour is a cruise plus a tour. And we'll hear a bit about that and how you can enjoy going inland to see some of our nation's parks, um, take a train ride. It's really exciting. So I hope you're ready to go. Got your cleats on. We're ready to go. Um, and I'm going to pass it off to Marissa. You can go ahead and take over screen sharing. And she's going to show us some really amazing pictures and talk about the kinds of activities you can experience in each of the ports and the kinds of itineraries that they have. Um, one other thing I'll mention while Marissa is getting set up is that Royal Caribbean really has this wonderful um, breadth of um, appeal to families couples and multi-generational travel, right? So grandkids, parents, and grandparents. A lot of people do that kind of vacation with Royal Caribbean. There's something on board for everybody. Um, and there are a number of different ships Marissa is gonna talk about tonight that are going to be in Alaska. And each of those ships kind of caters to different types of people. So if you're interested in that Alaska vacation, work with a travel agent, we'll help align you with the right itinerary, the right ship, and get you set up for the right, the, the, the kind of excursions that interest you. So it's a really wonderful um, ad adventure we're going to go on tonight. So I'm just going to let Marissa take over. Take it away. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. As Chrissy introduced, um, I am Marissa. I work for Royal Caribbean. I'm actually in Alaska right now. Um, just kidding, I'm embracing the quarantine in New Jersey, so <laughs> wishing I was in Alaska. Um, interestingly enough, I was supposed to go to Alaska this year. I was supposed to go in May with Royal Caribbean. We were going to do actually all the land um, that has to offer, and unfortunately that was canceled. I'm so disappointed, or I shouldn't say it was canceled, it was postponed. So it was the trip that I was looking forward to so much. Um, and I have a great presentation ahead for you this evening. And I'm, excuse me, but I will be reading from all, a lot of my notes because there's just so many ports of call and there's so many unique things that you can do within each port. So I wanted to make sure I had my notes aligned. So um, I have them all written down right here. So I'll be sharing that. There's some gorgeous pictures um, throughout the presentation. I am going to focus on them just for a little bit because Honestly, the pictures just don't do it justice. You have to go there and experience, even though, as Christy likes to say, the pictures are so sexy. Going there is just so amazing. Um, so I hope you all 
take advantage of that. You know, it's one of those destinations that just is filled with so much history and culture and beauty. Um, and like Christy was saying, it's definitely on a lot of people's bucket list. And in the past, like in the past, Alaska was perceived as those bucket list trips for those who are retired because they have more time and maybe a bit more um, financial stability to take like a bigger trip. But we're finding that is not the case anymore. There are a lot of families going as well, multi-gen families. Um, the grandparents wanting to experience it with their entire family. But of course, there's always those couples who just want to, once they do have that time and they are retired, go there as well. Um, and we have something like Chrissy was saying on board for everybody. So quick, um, quick background on, um, or an interesting little tidbit about myself is that my very first cruise, I was 14 years old, I cruised to Alaska. And it was one of those cliche multi-gen experiences. Um, my grandfather treated us. And then we also went with two other families and their grandparents went as well. So the kids ranged from, I think the youngest was 10 up to, I think the oldest was 15. Um, and we went on not Royal Caribbean. I won't say who, but it was terrible. The cruise itself was terrible. And I only say that because there was nothing to do past dinner time. And I'm not just saying just for the teens who were looking for something to do, but even like a show, there really weren't many options. So um, it was really just eat dinner and then go to bed. And that was very disappointing. So I said to my parents, like, why did you choose like this cruise line and not something a little bit more exciting? And they said, Marissa, this was over 20 years ago. Like there weren't many options. It's true. So there are Royal so Cruise many options in the marketplace. I mean, just yeah. Royal Caribbean alone has multiple ships up there. So there really is a ship for everybody. Yeah. And we've responded to that demand. Um, Chris and I will show you later on in the presentation that Royal Caribbean actually has four ships up there for summer 2021 and summer 2022, because we have found the need um, or responded to the need of so many people wanting to experience Alaska sooner rather than later. So um Without further ado, we are going to show you a bunch of fjords and um, panning for gold and just wildlife experiences on the train or hiking. You can go canoeing. Um, there's whale watching, of course, the iconic railroad ride and um, incredible dog sledding. So we will get into that. And as we had mentioned, pictures just do not do Alaska justice. The vastness is sort of surreal that you want to be there to experience. Um, if you ever had that surreal moment, you could definitely experience it in Alaska. Um, so whether you're walking on a glacier here or seeing the landscape just from the comfort of a lodge or passing an iceberg while on cruise, watching a family of seals perhaps floating on an iceberg, which is pretty amazing. There's so many sites both on and off the ship. The wildlife. You're never going to see the wildlife in Alaska. The, the wildlife that you see in Alaska, you'll never really see or experience in the mainland of America. You really have to go there and like, wow, does this not represent America for what it is? Um, you'll have to see that I wrote some of these statistics down, which is pretty cool. So for black bears, there's about 50,000 black bears in Alaska, 30,000 brown bears in Alaska. Um, and you'll, they're out and about in the spring summertime when we would be going there. So pretty cool to see them in their natural habitat. The caribou, um, they outnumber Alaskan residents. So that's how many caribou are uh, running wild in Alaska. Whales you'll be able to see right from the ship, whether it's on your balcony or you're on the pool deck or you're hanging out in the back by the flow rider. You should be able to see whales nonstop almost every day that's while awesome. you're on board. And then, of course, the bald eagle. So the uh, largest population of bald eagles reside in Alaska, so up to about 30,000 are estimated to live there. Wow. So here are all the ports of 
call um, that we go into when going to Alaska. Um, some of them you are going to get off and, you know, do a longer experience. You also have the option, like Christy was explaining, to do a cruise tour, which is either a pre or post to your cruise. Um, and we'll explain a little bit later on, those are limited to just two of our four ships, just because of the itinerary. Um, and I'll show you a map to really have you understand where the cruise tour goes. And, you know, it's the only way to get inland into right. Alaska. Obviously, so on the cruise, you can only go into the port. So get back, enjoy the show. We are about to go port by port. And I'm going to um, read off a couple of cool like unique um, adventures that you can do within each port so the Alaska inside passage um, millions of years ago south sound glaciers carved out the inside passage leaving majestic fjords um, islands and also bays and you'll see just draw jaw dropping beauty everywhere you look the incredible landscape of the inside passage is home to diverse wildlife such as orcas mountain goats. I think I'd be interesting to listen to as you're uh, passing by there, the sounds of the mountain goats. Bald eagles, bears, puffins. That's something that I would really like to see. Sea otters, which I find just adorable. Um, but honestly, the superstars of that area are the what we call the gentle giants. So those are the breaching humpback whales. Let's see. Next, we have Endicott Arm and Dog Glacier. It's just gorgeous. That like icy blue hue. So this is where you, we would cruise along. It's a 30-mile stretch. And you can take in the views of the granite cliffs, the mountain valleys, and dozens, apparently, dozens of waterfalls. You can get up close at look at the spectacular Dodge Glacier, glacier standing over 600 feet tall. Um, and the active ice cap produces massive chunky icebergs that float around the surrounding waters. So like not to, well, yeah, a little bit, but compared to like the Titanic a little bit, but they're not dangerous. So don't put that in your mind. Thank you but for clarifying. That's good. That's important, right? <laughs> We're like, it's they're not deep. in a bucket. <laughs> um, but who doesn't want to, you know, experience being outside, you know, glacier? Like, look how magnificent it. that is. I've always wanted to go up there for all these things. So this is just awesome. Yeah. Look, and in certain excursions, certain excursions, you can actually walk on the glaciers, yes. which are pretty cool. Pretty, again, surreal. Um. So, okay, so here's Hubbard Glacier. Um, you've probably heard of Hubbard Glacier. So it's the longest river of ice in North America and it's 76 miles long. And it's also one of the most active glaciers. So it's the only one that is advancing. So you should really be able to see just ice chunks coming off live um, as you're passing through, which makes me think how much longer do we have this to see? So you better go to Alaska next year or you might miss it. <laughs> um, also, it's known that humpbacks and orcas frolic in nearby coves in this area. So definitely a time that you want to be outside to experience it and maybe wear a jacket because it does get a little breezy. Then Icy Strait Point. Gosh, these pictures are just amazing. Um, so it's known for being one of the best spots for fishing and whale watching. You can um, get off here and into the port, dive into native Alaska culture at a tribal dance show. There's also a visit um, available to the village of Huna. And then you can also, if you want to take a walk through nearby rainforest, there's the opportunity to soar high above the trees on the zip rider, which is the world's longest zip line. Um, so that would be quite adventurous to just kind of Zip down, and I was told it goes up to 60 miles per hour. So if you are an adventure junkie, that would be pretty incredible. Um, the other thing I thought was really cool here is that you can expand your palate and, and enjoy some rich Alaskan cuisine um, by trying reindeer chili, 
um, or the Alaska Blue Burger, which is made with reindeer meat. So not my thing, but my husband would absolutely love that. So maybe that, I'll just that get just like a chicken. That totally salad. shows you how even one port has something for everybody, right? Yeah. Strolling mm-hmm. through town, going to the cultural center, or you know, zip lining through a rainforest. Uh, and all that other stuff. I mean, there really is something to kind of get everybody's attention. Right. And that's what's great about being on a cruise, right? So you get out during the day and, you know, maybe part of your group wants to walk through town and part of your group wants to go on the incredible zip line, but you all come back for dinner. You all have breakfast together. You go and see the shows at night together. So it's definitely making your own vacation while still vacationing together. Yeah. Which is also a good thing because, you know, sometimes you're like, can you use a little break from you? I'm going to do my own thing for a little bit. After this quarantine, you need a little space. That's right. right. This is quality time, not just time, right? Vacation yeah. is quality. <laughs> so there's also um, an inside passage in Canada. Probably not as gorgeous as Alaska, but still something to be seen. So it's actually um, 25,000 miles that you can kind of, um, depending on where the cruise ship goes, but it's from Seattle to Prince Rupert. It's very calm waters. You know, it's the inside passage. Oh, here was the other thing. Side note, one of the reasons that I was, um, we chose Alaska as one of my first cruises is because I went on like, some boat ride or something when I was younger and I got very seasick. So I was always very apprehensive about going on a cruise when I was young. And my parents were just preaching, like, it is so calm up there. You're not going to feel the movement whatsoever. And they were totally right. It was just the smoothest ride. Since then, I, you know, we're in the pack in the Caribbean and like, I was fine. Um, but yeah, in Alaska, really no fear of um, seasickness. So it's really calm waters. You can see different wildlife, um, such as while well, passing Vancouver. Uh, there's also the Gulf Islands National Park Reserve, where there's grizzly bears, white spirit bears, eagles, and salmon sharks. I looked up those salmon sharks. They're kind of cute. They're a little bit smaller. Obviously, they're called salmon sharks because they eat a lot of salmon. So um, I like seeing sharks from a safe distance, like on board a cruise ship. Okay, Juno. What do we know about Juno? Well, it's the capital, but um, you really, gosh, this is where you take in the amazing glacial landscape and the best view is available from the seat of a helicopter. So that's one of the shore excursions. And um, you can watch out for bears and mountain goats, goats and moose. And then once you land, they'll take you on a dog sled ride. So I think that is um, for those who want to check it off their bucket list. You got a helicopter and you have a dog sled ride. Dog sled ride. You can obviously do those two separate, but if you want to combine it for the all-inclusive experience, you're more than welcome to. Um, you can also explore Juno on foot because there's tons of trail. Actually. There's more trails than there are roads. So lots of hiking, but hiking for all levels. You know, you can do like a mile really calm hike or something with a little bit more um, terrain. And the other thing I thought was really cool is that we have the opportunity to take a high speed catamaran ride, um, specifically designed for wildlife watching because the Bay Area in which the catamaran is, it's rich with humpback whales, killer whales, sea lions, and porpoises. So I wonder if you kind of see some of the action of them eating one another. I mean, I would assume it's a possibility. <laughs> so that's Juno. It's the circle of life, right? It's the- <laughs> yeah, right? It's all in their natural habitat. Um, so Ketchikan, just fun to say, Ketchikan. One of the best ways to see this area and enjoy the scenery is honestly just to walk through town. So there's also the Totem Heritage Center, which I found interesting because you can explore the history of totem poles. Um, I remember we, I, we got a souvenir of a totem pole when I was in Ketchikan because I just thought they were so different um, and so unique. You can also treat yourself and your family to a rowdy time at the Great Alaskan Lumberjack Show. So 
So this is where the world's best timber athletes go head to head in an action packed hour of fun for the entire family. So it goes back to right something for everyone. You know, probably your nine year old nephew would think that is the coolest thing in the world. And you might want to go for a walk and go see the totem poles. Uh, there's also five varieties of North Pacific salmon. So you have the opportunity to go with experienced guides who will take you out fishing in a well-equipped fishing boat. And if you like, they can actually arrange to send your catch home to you in New Jersey. I thought that was pretty cool too. Probably kind of expensive. Actually, I have no idea. I'm just thinking like the dry ice, but Alaska ships salmon to our area all the time. So we gotta figure it out somehow. So you also have the option, um, and Christy will speak with all of you, depending on which itinerary you want and where you will leave from. Instead of doing like a cruise tour, if, if you just wanna do like a pre or post one or two night stay before getting on the cruise, it's always to release the anxiety of God forbid your flight being delayed. You know, you get in the day prior, so there's no stress whatsoever. And then you get to enjoy the city in which you fly into. So one of those options is Seattle, Washington. Um, and being on the complete opposite side of the country, maybe you haven't been there before and you really want to take in what it has to offer. So you can go into that gorgeous Space Needle if you want, which is left over from the 1962 World Fair. You can also, which I thought was pretty cool, do a tour of um, the Boeing factory. So for anyone who's very interested in aviation or technology, there's opportunities to explore um, that place. And then you also just walking around this really urban, cool city, they're yeah. known for brew pubs and of course coffee. So and there's a pretty big Seattle. art scene up there too. Um, so it is a nice way to spend a day or more. Yeah, there's also um, a really cool, I don't know how else to explain it. Anyone's been to Philadelphia, the way it was described to me, it almost sounds like Reading Terminal, which is just like a really big, I wouldn't even call it a mall, but there's a, a place where you can go and there's a lot of local artists who show their work and sell their work um, and lots of cool crafts and such. So it's just a, a cool city to explore. Back to Alaska. In Seward, um, they have an Alaska Sea Life Center. So there's a lot of marine life in its natural habitat and visitors can learn about the complex Alaskan East Coast system while also enjoying the antics of sea lions, otters, and porpoises. So probably a little bit of a calmer experience to see the wildlife um, and also almost like a guarantee to see the wildlife. Because when you're cruising, you never know what you're going to get. You'll get stuff, but you just never know. So here, it's sort of a guarantee. It's part you can of also this, you know, yeah. the, 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 you never know what you'll see and how often you'll see it. It's kind of like rainbows in Ireland. You should see them every day, but you never know where you'll get them. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can also, within the, um, Seward, visit Kenai Fjord National Park. That's a mouthful. Kenai Fjord National Park. Um, and that's where you can take glacier tours. So definitely something to add to your bucket list there. And from there, you'll be able to see sea lions, puffins, humpback whales, and lots more wildlife. Um, and then this, I thought, was really awesome. So at night, you can do a night kayaking experience on Resurrection Bay. Huh. So you'll just paddle through its really smooth water, and apparently you can get pretty up close and personal with sea otters. Wow. So, yeah, right? Pretty cool. Talk to Christy and find out how you, she can make that happen for you. I will be all over that otter thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sitka, Alaska. And here you can get um, in this picture, those really awesome totem poles. So very picturesque city of, or town of Sitka. And there's snow-capped peaks. There's hiking mountains, there's kayaking. Um, the adventures are never ending. You can also explore St. Michael's Cathedral, which is one of the few remaining Russian Orthodox churches in Alaska. 
And then as far as expanding your palate, there's um, local specialties such as Sockeye Lox, Halibut Fish and Chips, um, Dungeness Crab, and then there's also Silver Bay IPA and Halibut Point Peppenweizen. So I don't know about any of you, but when I travel, I love the touristy stuff, but I also just kind of want to once in a while find just like a random, I don't want to say hole in the wall, but you get what I'm saying, right? It's like where the locals go. Um, and that's sort of what this sounds like. You have the opportunity to really embrace that with some nice restaurants and, and what they specialize in. All right. I'm going to talk a lot about this slide because there's just a lot to take to take in here. So when you're in Skagway, there's so much to do. Um, so Christy will really help fine tune based on what you guys want to maximize your time here. So you have the opportunity to take an incredible journey on board the scenic railway of the world. And this is where you ride in vintage rail cars and it's a 20 mile route to the White Pass Summit. Um, it's fully narrated and you can see the mountains, the gorges, the waterfalls, tunnels, and plenty of other historic sites. You can, here's another opportunity where you can combine a helicopter glacier flight seeing with one of Alaska's favorite sports of dog sledding. So I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, there's also another opportunity to experience Alaska's valleys while horseback riding. And I thought that was different. Um, oh, here, here's a cool one. So there are professional mountain guides for rock climbing and rappelling adventure on granite walls. You can choose over a dozen climbing routes that offer something for all, available, all abilities. So if you really wanted to, your nine-year-old grandson, your 40-year-old daughter, and yourself can all go on that amazing experience. You'll be strapped in. Maybe you'll be the one taking pictures. Maybe you'll be the one all the way up top of the mountain. Up to you. Um, and then there was one more I wanted to highlight. So you can also walk on raised balance beams cross suspended bridges and fly through the air on a series of zip lines at Skagway's Adventure Park. So, I mean, I'm telling you more of the adventurous things just because I think they stand out a little more, but there's also very comfortable tours, whether they are on a railroad or walking or through some kind of vehicle. So there's honestly all levels of adventure and enjoyment in Alaska in each port. I think most people expect the kind of moderate to low level activity things, but they don't really expect zip lining through rainforests in Alaska. Like that just seems so ludicrous, but it's available up there. You never really know what you're going to get. So that's part of the reason why this is so helpful because it really does paint a fuller picture. This way, if you're, you know, thinking, oh, that would be cool, but what would my 12 year old want to do? There's stuff for your 12 year old or, you know, your overachieving, you know, spouse who thinks he or she may still be young. <laughs> lots of things you can do and lots of things that I would be doing, like all the cultural stuff. So it's, it is a great variety. Yeah. Or you and a family member can pan for gold and make some really nice um, souvenir to bring back home and remember the trip by for years and years to come. Every one of my clients who's been to Alaska has come home with like a little bottle, like a, like a, like a prescription size bottle, right? Like a little pill bottle with little fragments of gold in it. If they went on any of those panic yeah, excursions, it's, you come it's, home with stuff. <laughs> that's the whole point of a souvenir, right? You look at that, even something as simple as a magnet, like you're, it's on your fridge. You look at it every day and it brings you back to that moment and gosh, we could all use a bunch of souvenirs right now just to bring us back to all those wonderful moments. So, um, okay, where are we now? Tracy Arm Fjord. 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 I'm Fjord. Doesn't roll off my tongue very well. Um, but this is a one where you are cruising through. So you would be outside 
and just taking in the sights, make sure to bring your camera, perhaps have it around your neck just in case you drop it, it doesn't fall. Um, but I looked it up, the, the Stewart glaciers at the end of Tracy Arm are the most dramatic. So they're framed by mountains on either side and the glaciers are often bathed in a light mist that amplifies the blue hue of the ice. So in this picture kind of in the water, like the reflection of the water, it's just a really, it's so small, I'm sorry, but it's a really vibrant hue of blue, which I'm sure live is just breathtaking. So apparently you can see a lot of these. Vancouver, Canada, another destination where maybe you do a pre or a post and there's lots of things to do, such as if you want to get close to nature in Stanley Park, there's lush rainforest. Um, there's also an incredible aquarium. So it's Canada's largest aquarium and home to more than 70,000 animals. And it's a big aquarium. Um, Vancouver is also home to Canada's largest Chinatown. So you can experience um, really authentic, exotic foods, cheese, herbs. I'm a foodie, not as adventurous as the reindeer chili, um, but I would get down in Chinatown. So I wanted to make sure all of you knew about that. Um, also Victoria, British Columbia. So I heard that this town is very tourist friendly. Yes. Um, there's world famous gardens, there's lots of British history, yes. gourmet dining, lots of shopping. Um, oh, there's also that kind of thing. incredible lush gardens, an exotic butterfly garden, um, and apparently the town is named the City of Gardens, which I did not know. So to me, that sounds like a good tourist stop. It's a very, like you said, it's a, it's a uh, tourist friendly because it's, it's pedestrian friendly. It's very easy to get around. Things are close enough together where you don't feel like, you know, you need to have an excursion. You can do it on your own. It's really nice. It's a, it's a nice way to kind of kick off or, or kind of towards the end or the beginning of a trip. You kind of get you warmed up or it gets you mellowed out afterwards. That's why it's just before the beginning of the end. Well, good. So those were um, all the course of calls that we wanted to highlight and give you a little taste of what to expect or what you can um, plan with Christy in each of those. And as we had mentioned um, towards the beginning is that Royal Caribbean has responded to the demand that we've seen for Alaska and we have offered four ships. And like Christy was explaining, um, quantum innovation are the same class of ships. There are quantum class for anyone who's familiar with Royal Caribbean, we have different classes of ships and each class um, holds a lot of similar features. So quantum innovation are very similar looking ships. I think Christy is sitting on one of our quantum class ships um, as we speak right there on the pool deck. And then um, <laughs> Radiance and Serenade of the Seas are part of our Radiance class of ships. Um, and they are a little bit different. Um, or they're, they're very similar, but they're different than quantum innovation. So here are the itineraries that you can expect to choose from. We do round trip out of either Vancouver or Seattle. And then you, we have what we call open jaw, which are one ways. So Vancouver to Seward, Seward to Vancouver. Um, and that's where you have the opportunity to do a pre or post cruise tour. Now, if you have the time, I highly encourage you to do a cruise tour, highly. And here's really why. So let's focus on this map for just a moment here. You can see a lot of the ports of calls that we already reviewed, um, but to really get into the land of Alaska, like there's no way you can do so on a cruise. You have to do a cruise tour. Um, you actually have the option of doing an Alaskan cruise tour or a Canadian cruise tour. You know, maybe this is not your first time in Alaska. Um, maybe you already did a cruise tour and you want to see the other cruise tour or just maybe do it again. But looking at Alaska there, I mean, Fairbanks, Denali National Park, Talkeetsa, 
Um, you, you have to go in there and you can see by the map here, the railroad car, um, little, I don't know what it's called, um, line up there yeah. where you have, the, I think it's like a seven hour train ride. Cause I did it. It is my it's family like I a day, there. right? It's, it's the better part of a day. Yeah. Um, Sit back, look at all was, these windows, the scenery, and it was pretty cool. I have a picture um, later on. So if you were to do a cruise tour, it'd only be on either Radius, Radiance of the Seas or Serenade of the Seas, because those are the ones that do the one way. Um, and then you also have the option of doing Canada. So there's plenty of different um, cruise tours to choose from, um, and they can range from two nights to six nights. Um, so it's uh, it's definitely an experience. It's definitely a way to enhance your vacation. It's definitely a way to make the most of this incredible cruise that you're already going on. So think about it and talk to Christy. Here it's is those, an example uh, of one of our- Go that whole way. You might as well go the next extra little mile, right? Yeah. You're gonna go to Alaska. Why miss Denali while you're there? Just spend two extra days. Do this amazing train ride. Look at this train. <laughs> yeah. So what's really cool about the train ride specifically is that Royal Caribbean owns the railroad cars. So we're not sharing it with anyone else traveling outside of Royal Caribbean, which I think is so pertinent now, especially because of when you're cruising on Royal Caribbean, you understand the safety protocols and everything that we uphold while on our ships um, and everything that will be going forward through this post-pandemic world that we're living in, um, that there isn't anyone coming on from other tours or other cruise ships where we don't know what their quarantine process has been or you know their COVID negative test or whatever the protocols are going to be. So you can feel really safe while experiencing Alaska with Royal Caribbean. Yeah, so like I was um, reading off previously, Fairbanks, Denali National Park, Talkeetha, Anchorage, um, Alaska, and this was the trip that I personally was supposed to do in May. Um, gosh, I hope it happens next summer. I just am so excited to go and see a world that is so different than the world I live in right now. And that's the whole point of traveling is to have all these new experiences and just see what's out there. So I, I highly recommend a cruise tour. Um, and then for Canada, you have, there's two different options and it ranges from five to six nights. You can go see um, Victoria, British Columbia, which we kind of talked about already, Banff, Calgary, Jasper, um, and Lake Louise. My mom loves the Canada part of it because she's from Montreal. So um, next time we go, she said she wants to do the Canada part of it because she hasn't really experienced Western Canada as much growing up in Montreal. So lots of gorgeous opportunities. And that's all I have for you this evening. So you know, I think one of the most important things you said, everything was really wonderful, but one of the most important things <laughs> you said was to get away from where we are right now. You know, we've um, we've been spending a great deal of time at home. And even though some of us have maybe taken a weekend here or there to get away or or you know, visit a, a relatively close but other place, you know, maybe in your own state, or you know, that kind of thing. We really haven't been getting away. And I I will guess that everybody on this call lives in relative suburbia, right? We're not living in the wilderness. I'm gonna take a wild guess. <laughs> but the truth is, is that. Alaska is like the last frontier. I was watching Call of the Wild over the weekend, that Harrison Ford movie that came out earlier this year. And 
it, it was all about Alaska. I mean, it was about this magnificent place. And you can go there yourself and see it and, and be part of it, even if it's only for a week. It, it's the kind of place that really can kind of re, re, um, recharge your battery, so to speak, right? Like you just kind of unplug your life, go and recharge, but get away from what you're used to and experience it. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of different kinds of vacations you can have. Alaska is so much about the great outdoors that it really can be a monumentally different experience from your regular life. Um, so it, it brings something very special to the table. Plus it's home, right? I mean, this is part of the United States, Canada, if you take that other um, cruise tour, a lot of people are considering vacationing in the U.S. when they get back to traveling. And, you know, our most um, popular places to travel in the States by domestic travelers, by U.S. travelers is Alaska and Hawaii, Florida, California. I mean, these are the places that, that get the more, you know, the, all, the, all the big hype. There's a reason. And look at Alaska. We've seen some amazing pictures from Marissa tonight. There's so much to see and do. Um, I'll, I'll emphasize briefly while we're on this slide, the, the top reasons to work with a travel agent. You know, whenever you're interested in going somewhere, whether it's a beach vacation, you know, you're thinking about going to Caribbean Island or you wanna to go to Paris or some bucket list thing you're talking about, talk to a travel agent. You know, we have a breadth of knowledge, a lot of experience, and we know what you don't know because that's our job. Um, so we will work with you to find out what specifically is, is of interest to you, makes your vacation interests unique, and then we'll tailor your trip specifically for you. And that comes with choosing an itinerary that suits you, choosing a ship that suits you. It talks about that we talk about things like what are the kinds of activities you enjoy? Who are you traveling with? What might they enjoy? Are you a night owl? Aren't you a night owl? You know, do you want to go out and see shows? Do you want to hit a casino? Or, or are you more laid back than that? We take into consideration as travel agents you. Um, so you have us, you, our expert hands. We tailor a trip for you. We're always monitoring everybody's deals and discounts. There's plenty of those coming down the pipe um, starting in January. Um, particularly if you're interested in any cruise, any destination, um, January is what we call wave season. And that's when some of the biggest promotions of the year come out. So if you are interested in any cruise whatsoever, reach out to your travel agent. I hope you'll consider that me. Um, and let's start talking about whatever that trip might be. Um, because if I know what you're interested in before the promotions come out, then when the promotions come out, I call you and say, hey, now might be the sweet spot to make that plan a reality. Um, lots of other things go into um, working with a travel agent, the most important of which is that I am your advocate from the minute we start talking all the way till the time you get home. And it's a personal experience. There's no call centers when you work with me. Um, I'm your personal travel agent. And this year, um, it's been my great pleasure to deal with all the challenges that my clients canceled trips brought on their behalf. So there's a lot of benefits to working with a travel agent. Um, most of us charge a very small fee. I have charged a very small fee, $49 to do all this work for you. So it's, a, it's, it's money well spent. I want to thank everybody for being here. And to do that, I'm also going to extend a little promotion of my own. If any of you are interested in booking a Royal Caribbean cruise, it doesn't have to be Alaska, but there are some criteria around it, week long, that sort of thing. Um, if you are interested in booking a trip by the end of this year, you'll receive up to $150 in onboard credit from me. A little gift from me to you over the holiday season. And all it takes is for you to reach out to me. Um, now that you've been on one of my calls, you'll be in my, I'll send you emails once a week kind of thing. Um, but, you know, pick up a phone, shoot me an email. Go on to my website, escapeartistholidays.com, where you can register for this. It's our latest quarterly vacation giveaway. It's a villa. A private villa. It's like your own personal resort. It's in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, which looks stunning. I've looked at all the pictures for this villa. Put your name in the hat. You just might win it. Um, so I do want to encourage you to follow me on social media and by all means, 
poke around on my website, see what inspires you. I hope you've been inspired by Alaska tonight. Um, if anybody has any questions, you can pop them into the little chat box. Or like I said, by all means, you can always just reach out to me. I'm certainly happy to work up um, in particular questions that you have um, about your own personal um, ambitions to go on vacation. Alaska is on my bucket list. Um, I've joked before that my bucket list is, used to be as long as my arm, and now it's about as tall as I am. And I'm gonna have to keep growing because my list gets longer all the time. <laughs> but Alaska is on there. I was supposed to go a couple of years ago too. Um, but you know, life happens sometimes. So um, I look forward to visiting Alaska someday. And I know that many of you who expressed an interest and are here tonight would like to do it as well. Um, if you are interested in learning more about what travel looks like for 2021 and going forward, whether that's on cruise or on land, last presentation was about that. It was about health and safety protocols and what the experience is going to be based on what we know today. And here too, you can go back to my website and go look at the video we recorded last week. It was called the, uh, the state of travel today or something like that. So please enjoy looking at our past videos. I hope you sign up for our next one. Let's see, next, next one is either France or US cities. I can't remember which and my notes look terrible. So I hope to see you guys again. Thank you again for spending your night with me. I hope you all stay healthy, stay safe, and I will catch you next time. Thanks, Marissa. Thanks everybody for being here. Have Bye, a good have a good night.